Mayo Lake, which is also known as Mayo Reservoir, is sort of an unintentionally hidden gem, about nine miles north of Roxboro, North Carolina. The lake is about 2,800 acres, and there's 85 miles of shoreline, which is owned by Duke Energy. I call it a hidden gem because I know people who have lived within 40 miles of Mayo Lake their entire adult lives. And yet when I tell them I camp there, they tell me they've never even heard of it. It truly is a beautiful lake, and our camping experience there was nothing less than terrific. So I thought it'd be worthwhile giving a tour of the grounds and a little review of what it has to offer. The first thing I need to be very clear about is that the terms Mayo Lake, Lake Mayo, Mayo Lake Park, Lake Mayo Park are all used to describe the park I'm reviewing here today. But this is a completely different place from the Mayo River State Park, which is actually north of Greensboro, North Carolina. Mayo Lake Park is a county park maintained by Person County, North Carolina. And if there's one thing it's known for, it is its boat ramp and its fishing. People come from all around. They participate in fishing tournaments. They fish for recreation. They fish for food. And it's a great place to do just that. So if you like to combine your fishing with your camping experience, Mayo Lake Park offers the best of both worlds. Let's take a little tour and learn some more about the park itself. The park entrance itself is a left turn off of Neal's Store Road, which as you can imagine is just a hop and a skip from Neal's Store. Makes sense. It's about the only place around if you need some supplies really quick. But I will warn you, as you approach, you're going to have to slow down if you're looking for the sign, because it's not much of a sign. As you pull into the main entrance, off to the left, that access road will lead to a dump station and a dumpster. But we're going to continue on to the RV sites first. There's a picnic shelter towards the front entrance, I assume is for day use. And you'll see that the access road is mostly gravel. It looks like maybe recently they've widened this road and part of it is gravel and part of it is older pavement. The road is a little windy and it's a little hilly, but it should be no problem at all for any kind or class of RV or travel trailer. Just before we enter the main RV area itself, there are a series of cabins. They're here on the map, and you'll see them on the right as I pass by. I can't tell exactly. They look to be about 10 by 20. I wish I could have gotten to see inside one, but the opportunity didn't arise. Once you're past the cabins, you begin to enter the main RV area itself. One big loop with 28 RV spaces. I'm not going to point out each individual space, but I thought I'd show you a few so you can get your bearings on the map. And we're going to start with space one, which is located right here. Most of these spaces are pull through or pull along side spaces, although there are back end spaces. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I'm doing this drive through tour about 3.30 on a Sunday afternoon. The park was full when we were here Friday and Saturday, but by noon on Sunday, it pretty much cleared out. As I drive around this loop, I believe I counted eight RVs, including our own, that were still there on a Sunday afternoon. Now, as I make this left turn, we're about halfway through the loop, located right about here on the map. Overall, in the area where we stayed, we found the grounds to be well-maintained. They were neat and tidy. There were people driving through who clearly were working for the county. We even saw a police officer come through a few times. But it was a quiet weekend. People behaved themselves, and I think everyone was enjoying themselves as well. And here's where we come toward the end of the loop. This camper on the right is ours. We're in space 28, located right here, the last one in the loop. And directly ahead of us, you'll see the shower house, which was only about 75 yards away from our spot. While we didn't do any tent camping this particular weekend, I do like to go tent camping. So I thought I would take a tour of the tent area. There are two different areas, one for group camping and one for individual camping. It's located right about here on this map. And I gotta say, I was not nearly as impressed with the tent area as I was with the RV area. It seemed rather unkempt Overgrown, there were tent pads for people to put their tents on. There was only one family that I saw camping there. But the grounds just didn't look like they were well maintained in this particular area. I know tent camping can be more fun when it's rustic, but there was something about it that just wasn't very appealing. The last thing I wanted to review was the boat ramp because it is, as I said before, pretty well known. It's a very nice boat ramp with a great parking lot. There's an abundance of room for people's trailers, for their vehicles. People come here to launch their boats, their kayaks, their canoes. And even though we don't have a boat, I thought I would take a quick spin around and show you what it looked like. Oh wait, the boat ramp was the second to the last thing I wanted to take a look at because we have to take a tour of the dump station. I mean, who doesn't want a tour of the dump station? And as dump stations go, I thought they did a nice job with this one. It's a little bit separated from the rest of the RV park. It's convenient on the way out. It's very easy to get in and out of. So well done on the dump station. back at our own campsite, I thought I'd share a few things about our personal experience. We had a great time here this weekend. 
We really enjoyed our camp space, which was only about 50 yards away from the lake itself. So we were able to take our canoe and just walk right down to the lake. But we did have one afternoon of very heavy rain. And so if you find yourself needing to spend some time inside, you better bring your own entertainment. There was no television signal at all the entire weekend. As I said, we had our blow up kayak. We had room for everything. We had a place for a campfire. It was just really a delightful sight. We also got out on the trails and enjoyed that a lot. Pro tip, if you let your wife walk ahead of you, she knocks all the spider webs down before you get to them. The trails though were very nice. They were moderate to hike. And all throughout, there were different things pointing out the various flora and fauna. And of course, our travel companion, Digby the dog, he enjoyed his hike too. Yeah, I know. It looks like a French can-can girl walk, but it's a he. And because we follow a mostly carnivore diet, packing food was easy. We ate a lot of steaks, hamburgers, we ate lots of eggs, and we enjoyed it. And what's better than food cooked over a campfire or on a grill? So that's our look at Lake Mayo Park in Roxboro, North Carolina. We'll definitely be coming back. I hope you found this video helpful. This is the part where I'm supposed to beg people to either like it or subscribe, but I don't do that. I just hope in some way it made a difference for you and that you're inspired to get out into the great outdoors, maybe even at Mayo Lake.